What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, um, and everyone, as you know, in between. Grab your vices, let's chill out, and get straight to it. This is episode 31 of Straightforward with Miss B, alongside uh, my guest host, who's back again today. Hey, everyone. How y'all doing? Sorry for the technical difficulties last week, but... I showed up, but I didn't make the podcast. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he did not, I mean. <laughs> he definitely showed up, you guys, but I I told y'all what happened last week. So it, it is what it is. Y'all know how this shit go. But anyway, how was your week, sir? Uh, yeah, it was a long week. Um, Last week, we celebrate my high school. Uh, we had a high school reunion. Mm-hmm. With all the classes. Oh, okay. So they made it out of kind of like a week, mm-hmm. a different event for every day. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think yeah. everybody celebrating their little reunions and stuff. Oh this yeah. Past couple couple weeks. And it was very nice. I couldn't. I could, if I could say, mm-hmm. we had a baby classic. Oh okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. What high school you went to in Birmingham? I went to Phillips High School. Oh, okay. What side of town is on? Downtown Birmingham, Central, baby. We did downtown. Oh, okay. Did downtown. Yep, so we the city school. Oh, okay. It's night. still open? Is the school um, still open? It's an it's a, um, academy now. Okay. They changed into an academy and... um. They built a new school. Um, George Washington Carver. Mm-hmm. Cause my school was an all white school back in the day. Mm-hmm. And then they integrated. Right. You know. So they was able to close it, and then they kept the um, was it George Washington Carver? You know, every city got a mm-hmm. George Washington Carver, I think. Yeah. So they built a new. George Washington Carver and just put both of those two schools together. Okay. Yeah, so. All right. Well, I'm glad you had a good time at your um, reunion. Um, My reunion was, what, a week before that? So, yeah, everybody's just been, you know, all the old folks been gathering. (laughs) Gathering and partying and having a good time. I didn't do too much over this, um... Yeah, this past weekend I was on granny duty, so me and her just kind of chilled out and, you know, food around, watched some shows on Netflix and stuff like that, and, um, yeah, just chill. You know, every moment with my grandmother is, you know, a very uh, special one, and, uh, yeah, I enjoy you tell our time. I, said hi. I will. I'll let her know. So this week, you guys, let's see here. A lot of things been going on. um, And, of course, you know, we definitely want to get into some things today. Uh, Let's see. So the Democrats, let's see. We'll start off with that, with the government. Democrats, um, you know, they introduced a spending plan, uh, which include nearly... $80 $80 billion in IRS funding. Um, of the $80 billion, uh, $46 billion of that uh, will be for, quote-unquote, enforcement. Um, this has many small, of course, this enforcement um, funding um, has a lot of small business owners and, of course, middle-class um, families kind of worried a bit um, <clears throat> because with that enforcement, um, along it's supposedly, um, they're going to be hiring about 87,000 new agents, um, IRS agents. So, um, that means, you know, a lot more auditing is going to happen with these new, um, you know, with this tax, tax plan, if it definitely, you know, get, um, get passed. I know you are a tax guy. You have your own IRS business, um, before I go to you, uh, me personally, and I am going to be, um, my desk is wood, so I'm going to knock on wood right now. Um, thank God I have never been audited. 
Um, hopefully I will not ever be audited by the IRS. Um, one thing for me, I do appreciate and I want to thank my mother if she listens in on this. My mom used to work for the IRS at one point. Um, back in the day, I was, you know, very young, might have might have still been a baby at this age. But I, I just remember her, you know, working for the IRS at one point. Um, so my mom has all, you know, always been a very intelligent woman. Um, she ended up, of course, you know, kind of teaching me how to do taxes, um, at a young age. So as soon as I was able to start working at 17, 18 years old, she taught me how to do my first tax return. And I kind of just, you know, been able to kind of, you know, work with that. And luckily, you know, I do have a knack for numbers, as well so um that's kind of helped me out over the years and plus having friends such as you ag although i've never reached out to you for any tax advice but i do have other friends like keila um a lot of people that i've had surrounding me uh, throughout my lifetime have been you know either you know certified public accountants or whatnot um so i've always tend to um, be around people who is pretty good in math but from you being a um, IRS tax business owner, um, how do you feel about this plan? Do you think it's going to be a good thing or bad thing? Well, I think it's really some overkill. That's a lot of people, 87,000, you know. And if you do the math, shit, 50 states mm -hmm. divided by 87,000, that's a lot of representatives, right? See, I, yeah. And they're going to come <coughs> looking for. <coughs> Those people, they're going to start off with those people with that old, those PPP loans and those mm -hmm. IBL loans. See, them people going to think they didn't got away with it, but they're going to they gonna let it let you think, let you forget about it. Right. And then they're going to hit you. And then a lot of little, I wouldn't say, I say loopholes and deductions that you could put on your tax return and get away with. Yeah, they're going to stop all that stuff. Right. You know, so it's going to be a lot of overkill and mm -hmm. and it's going to hurt the middle class because those are the ones that's getting those deductions. And man, that's a lot of people. I'm still, that number just got big. <laughs> that number get me 87,000. Yeah but, yeah, but when you think about, you know, you got 50 states, but what, how many people in the U.S. alone? I mean, you know. It's probably it's it's I don't know what the U.S. population is, but it's millions of people that lives in the U.S. So eighty-seven thousand. I heard they it's, wanted it's, hundred thousand. Yeah, so. it, it sound like a lot, but then it don't sound like a lot compared to the the population total of the entire, like I said, U.S. Um, one thing you mentioned about the PPP loans. Um, yeah, Joe Biden also. Um, he had a press conference and, uh, well, it was let out in the press as well in regards to the PPP um, and all of those other business loans that was going on during the pandemic. Um, they're going to be st um, actually stretching um, the time frame um, for how long people can get, you know what I'm saying, can get, I guess, audited on those or charged for any you know, fraudulent crimes that they may have done with the loans um, out to 10 years. So they're basically, you know, probably with these eight new agents that they're going to hire, um, shoot, you could have you could have got a PPP loan in, in 2020 and 2028 20. or 2020, 30, you still could be charged in case they, you know, they're going to be still out there looking for you. So y'all be y'all people who did, you know, <sighs> do the fraud and scam these folks out their money. Um did it already. Don't think yeah, it. don't think you out the clear yet. Um the IRS also, um, for those who just may not be, you know, just, you know, up to date and and and, and aware of things when it comes to your taxes. Um the IRS uses a software, of course, that rank um, that rank each tax return um, with a numeric score. Um, so basically the higher scores are usually the um, returns that trigger an audit. Um, so like also the ranking system can flag returns with like deductions, as you mentioned, or credits um, compared to income 
<clears throat> income that fall outside of like acceptable ranges. For example, if a person is basically claiming um, that they make a annual income of one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars, however, and however, they're claiming a fifty thousand dollar charitable contribution, that will be a return that the IRS ranking system will more than likely um, it would trigger it and you could possibly get audited, you know, audited on there. Um, other red flags on returns um, include things such as like you claiming a home office, um, auto reductions, um, refundable tax credits. Um, I believe it's the EITC, um, unreported income. And of course, you know, if they see like rounded numbers, like if you have a thousand dollars or you have 1500 rounded numbers on your return, um, that's what they say, you know, if you if you are finagling numbers on your returns, um, never put rounded numbers on there. Excuse me. Hello, you still there? AG. AG. Yes, I'm still here. I had made a mistake and did what you told me to do and couldn't find the button. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah. before we move on to the next thing, you, anything else you want to add to this discussion about the IRX? I mean, IRS? Yeah, I just tell y'all um, to be careful there. They got five to seven years to audit you. That's the, um, that's part of the law, but you saying they extended to 10 years. No, so. no, 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 no. You heard me wrong. Oh. The taxes is something different than the PPP. Those two are two different oh, things. PPP. It's them okay. searching for people who file fraudulent PPP loans. They're extending that time frame to 10 years. It, okay, yeah, yeah, this is separate from just your regular, you know, your ta you filing your taxes. Okay, yeah. And watch those round numbers. Like you said, they look for stuff like that. You always, mm-hmm. Yeah, so yep. that's mm. all on that subject, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. So, um speaking of, let's see. We're still kind of talking about um the US government in a sense. Um the 80-year-old woman Carolyn Bryant Dunham, um who was accused um who accused 14-year-old Emmett Till, um may forever rest in peace of making, you know, advances towards her uh, back in, what, 1955, um, which ultimately led to his brutal death. Um, this was like 70 years ago. Um, a Mississippi grand jury um, basically declined, uh, well, judge declined to indict uh, Mrs. Dunham. Um, basically, the district attorney stated that it was insufficient evidence um, on charges of kidnapping and manslaughter. Um, in the early summer, um, the family of Emmett Till, um, they had located an unserved arrest warrant for Ms. Dunham, um, her late husband, for Ms. Dunham, her late husband, and his brother. Um, there was a note that they found um, written on the back of the warrant um, that stated that they, the police at the time um, did not arrest Dunham because they could not locate her. So she had kind of just vanished and disappeared um, from the town um, when all of this was going on. Um, so how do you feel about that? For me personally, I feel as though, I feel as though, you know, it's a very unfortunate situation. And Miss Dunham, who I believe she currently lives in, you know, like a senior facility uh, you know, senior assistance home, living assistance home. Um, so she's at the point of kind of like no return, you know. So it's like, what, what, I don't, I mean, part of me feel like what difference would have it have made if they would have locked her up, you know what I'm saying, found her guilty yeah. and, and put her in prison at this point. Um, I'm sure whatever karma or whatever was going to come back to Miss Dunham. Um, she it's probably, yeah, she probably have already experienced that. I understand 
you know, Emmett Till's family. Um, like I said, I'm kind of 50-50 on this. I do understand Emmett Till's family. At the end of the day, you know, everybody that was involved in this situation, um, in the death um, of their loved one, um, should be held accountable for the crime that they that they've done. And unfortunately, back in 1955, and most definitely, uh, you know, being in Mississippi, um, that was for sure a difficult task, you know what I'm saying, to try to have, you know, just have the legal team and all of that with you and, of course, law enforcement and FBI and whoever else to kind of capture and charge all of the individuals involved, Um I can understand them wanting to, you know, them wanting to just have their their day. You know what I'm saying? Their day in court with uh, with Miss Dunham. Um, but like I said, I'm just kind of fifty fifty on that situation. What's your thoughts on that? I'm kind of fifty fifty too, cause having it been over sixty five years now, and and if what, it's nothing they can really do with that that old lady now. And like you said, the karma that for doing that, she probably already experienced it. Right. And I'm basically the same thing you said, you know, you feel sorry for the family, but I hate they even bringing that back up so they can rekindle that, you know, but I know they want somebody to go to jail and mm-hmm. and the month, the father and the son are ready. <laughs> yeah, they already dead. gone. They did. Yeah. And they talking about they couldn't find her back then when they had the arrest on one. You know, that was a bunch of crap. Right. Right. So, I think I they're going through it. Yeah, I think at this time, um, in these type of situations where cases are kind of sol- these solved cases after so many years, especially 50, 60, 70 years um, old, and the individuals involved are elders or no longer living, um, I think for pa- families who um, want to try to get their justice, justice, um, to, you know, I think one, one, yeah, that's what I'm saying. One thing is just definitely feeling, um, excuse me, filing a civil suit against the family. So I would suggest, and I'm sure maybe they've already thought of that in the process of doing that, but the Teal family, um, I would think at this point to, you know, file a civil suit against the, um, Brian Dunham, Family, if um, you find a civil suit out by now, I wouldn't even do worry about that. You should have been there. That well, we don't know, we didn't research it enough. They may have, but in the okay. event that they have not, which is what I'm speaking on, because I don't know for sure, um, I would definitely just go ahead and file a suit, a wrongful death suit, um, against the family and just, yeah, sue they ass. I'm sure they got. I know they got land and shit down there that they can <laughs> give up in Mississippi. Yeah, yeah, they about to die anyway. Shit, they damn near dead. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah. rest in heaven always, um, Emmett Till. Um, your death has definitely been um, one that this whole situation has been one that has been kind of on the top, you know, top of the list when it comes to um incidents american history incidents that's happened um in regards to um just racism in america um is definitely a standout story standout story that you know generations on generations will you know learn about and um know of so your legacy and you know your your history um will always kind of live on you know yeah all I'll right nicole linton 37 um the traveling nurse um she's been charged with six counts of murder and five counts of vehicular manslaughter um, for the deadly car crash, which killed six people. Um, the nurse um, was allegedly driving 90 miles per hour in a Mercedes Benz um, when she just, you know, out of nowhere, um, ran a red light and slammed into traffic um, in Windsor Hills, um, which is located in Los Angeles, California. 
Um, Lint um, was in court this week. Um, they're stating that she could face up to 90 years um, in prison. Um, she's currently being held on a $9 million bail. Um, initial investigation results, um, they found that there was no evidence of alcohol or drug use um, excuse me, in her system. Um, however, her own attorney um, has alluded um, to um, her having profound mental health issues. Uh, which could be a potential reason um, behind the tragic incident. Incident. A prosecutor stated that Linton has been involved. Um, she's been involved in over 13 prior uh, car collisions um, throughout the United States. Um, one recently happened in 2020, um, where two vehicles were totaled and people people were injured in that incident. This is a crazy story. She sounds like one of them people that they should have been took their license. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But we don't know. I guess we would just need to know more details about the prior incidents to see if those were, you know, she was at fault in those situations. Because I, I was really sitting back trying to wrap my head around, like, this lady... You know, she a traveling nurse, so she pretty much got her life together, you know, you would think. And then I heard some rumors about, you know, she was feeling a, some type of way um, about a boyfriend or something, you know, how those situations go. Uh, but to just press on the gas and go 90 miles per hour just in traffic like that and, and killing those people and killing that baby, uh, the woman was pregnant. And I believe they had just left the doctor's appointment or something. It's just a very sad situation. And I'm trying to think of, like, if no alcohol and no drugs were in her system, then it had to be either maybe, I don't know. I was going to say maybe some type of fault, faultiness happening with the car, with the Mercedes, or nah, she had a nah. mental breakdown, a mental episode, and she freaked out, or... Is she someone that suffers from seizures? I remember I used to know a girl who suffered from seizures, and she would have seizures while driving. However, you know, over the years, she kind of learned how to, when driving, and she has an episode to kind of help calm herself down if she's on the road by herself. Um, those are the only things that I could think of that could have happened. What you think? Or the boyfriend and called her and told her he got another girlfriend or something she rushing trying to get over there but pretty much all that stuff you said is, is a good point you know trying to those seizures really happen because i done had a few truck drivers you know i drive the trucks also mm -hmm. and i just seen that happen with a something happened to the driver while you're driving and, and cause up one of those deadly accidents and right so I don't know. There's no drugs and no alcohol. It's got to be. It's got to be something. Uh, she well, she was trying to die too. Oh, she, she was trying to die too, right? Yeah. And apparently, she just she had this this or this is just some crazy, um, thing that she liked to do. You know, if she had if she's had thirteen other prior collisions, I mean, come on now. Uh, yeah, one one person who can't drive, I don't think they would continue <laughs> to drive. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they would continue to drive to the point where they just keep getting to these accidents. I know her, her insurance oh, super high. was super high. Was oh, super yeah. high. So that's why, that's why I'm thinking more like on the seizures tip, you know? Yeah. Or it got to be something like that or um, malfunction with the car. Or malfunction with the car. I don't know, but that's crazy for her, for that to have happened. I'm, with this type of situation, you know, you see people online who, um, of course, you know, because of the number of people and kids, you know, kids and, and an unborn child um, was killed in this situation, um, people have already, you know, jumped to judgment Um on this lady um, without hearing the full details of what 
could have possibly happened. Um, I would like to hear exactly what, what right uh, what exactly happened with her. Um, it does not excuse the fact, even if she had maybe a mental episode, it doesn't excuse the fact, and she's going to, you know, she's going to do her time for sure. You know, they're going to make sure she pay um, in some yeah, form of fashion for this. Yeah, that lawyer, he said mental health just trying to knock off some of the time. <laughs> right. Yeah, he 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 jumping. He he trying to jump on it early. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and put that out there. So you know, right. But it yeah, it it clearly has to be something though. Um, especially if she, I mean, but the lady is 37, 37 years old. Hmm, is it possible for somebody to be in 13 accidents in 37 years? Well, 20 years. Yeah. I mean, if they started, well, if she started driving at 16, 17, could somebody have been in 13 accidents? Yeah. If they 37. Well, they had a lot of bad luck driving. It's they just, had, right. <laughs> right. They just, have, they just have bad luck driving. It, and it's yeah, people it's out there that one. just have bad luck driving. Yeah, because my son don't buy this. Fourth or fifth. Maybe six. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so the, hey, I just proved my point right there. A, a perk right. is right. <laughs> right, it's not so far fetched for a person who's almost forty years old to have been involved oh, in thirty accidents. I mean, in thirteen accidents. Yeah, because I got a twenty-three-year-old, and he done had either five or six already. Right. Yeah. So I'm not going to put that on her until, you know, excuse me, more information come out. But you know how the news is. The news like to throw shit out there. You know what I mean? For shock yeah, they blow it up. To blow it up, right. Um, but I'm praying for the families, families um, of the people who was killed. Um, and I'm just going to sit back and see how this all play out, you know? I'm pretty sure she was a... Caucasian, right? No, she was a yeah. African American lady. That was a tra- She was a traveling nurse from Houston, Texas. That was doing work, you know, nursing work in Los Angeles, and she looks like a normal, everyday black woman. Mm. So that's why it's kind of like you know, for everybody, it's kind of like, dang, you know, right? What she was going through. For her to do that. And did you hear about the actress? I didn't put this on our agenda, but did you hear about the actress? Um, I forgot her name and what movie she played in, but they they played a video of her. She's still in the hospital in critical condition, um, but they played a video of her basically going 80, about 80 miles per hour down her residential street, and she crashed right into her front, down near her front door. And she okay. set the place on fire and everything. They had to bring out, like, they said, like, 55 fighters out there um, to kind of contain it. You know, them L.A. houses be kind of close together. You know, one fire is going to swoop through real quick. So they had to bring the firefighters out. But today they announced that they did do a blood test, and they found cocaine in her system, a little bit of fentanyl. But they said the fentanyl could have come from prescription drugs um, and they still, you know, they still trying to, you know, figure that out. But yeah, she was definitely high. So they got fitting all the prescription drugs too. Yeah, small amount. Mm. It, it's in certain drugs, certain. Um, it's in that cocaine she had too. <laughs> yeah, but you know, for the white Hollywood elite folks, they they didn't write it up like that in the article. They made it seem like the fentanyl possibly came from some prescription drug that she was taking at the time. Mm, yeah. You if it had been one of us <laughs> you hey, are they was, they was mad cuz the other lady they had no drugs at all on the sister. <laughs> right. Bad as yeah. hell. So they had to they had to throw the 13 uh car accidents <laughs> out there. See how they do us, man? <laughs> they got to find they going to find something out there. The media ain't like, right. Man. The media is against us, man. At all costs. Yeah, hopefully that lady survived. You know, I forgot her name. I've seen her in a few films um, before. She was fucked up that day. 
for her to just be speeding down her street and and crash into her her front yard. Crazy. Burn down her house. Right. <laughs> just crazy. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Why you just drive to the name out? <laughs> oh my god, yo. But anyway, um, let's talk about some good news. Um, little baby, little baby buys out. Here in Atlanta, um, you know, it's that time school is back in. So everybody, celebrities are doing their back to school drives. So uh, rapper Lil Baby um, with QC, the label, buys out West End Mall um, here, which is located um, in the on the west side. And um, if anybody's familiar of the, with the West End Mall, that's close to the Atlanta University Center, which is... Basically, Morehouse College, Spellman, Clark, Mars Brown, they're all in the area. Um, but he had a community event um, where he was basically he bought out the mall um, for the kids in the neighborhood. Um, clothes, shoes, school supplies, uh, food. Um, and, um, yeah, I think he did a – he does this – I want to say this might be his maybe third time doing this. Well – not to this extent, because I, I think this is the first time he might have just bought out the mall, you know, flat He's out. But, right, but he usually does his back-to-school events at this particular mall, but I think this might be the largest as far as, like, his financial payout. Um, so, you know, shout-out to Lil Baby. Um, 21 Savage, I believe, will be hosting a back-to-school drive himself um, on the east side of Atlanta this month. I don't know where it's going to be held at. Um, but shout out to the men, you know, they, they kind of, uh, I'm glad that people like, you know, T.I., people like um, GZ, I'm trying to think of who else in the city that always uh, try to give back to the community, um, maybe Killer Mike, I know DC Young Fly, the comedian, actor, uh, once he started getting his little paper, you know, he would have stuff on the west side, um, him and I actually, um, He's younger than me, but we grew up, like, on damn near, like, close to each other. Um, so I'm glad that their um, their efforts kind of passed down to the next generation of, you know, celebrities in the city. Um, I always think it's a good thing. Future, Future does stuff through his um, foundation every year as well. Um, so shout out to them, man. Yeah, I salute all those guys for the giving back, and I, and I thank them, you know. Thank them for the, for the giving back. Yes, yes. Speaking of hip-hop, hip-hop. So the major thing this week, and we're going to end with this story, um, Irv Gotti, Irv Gotti, the CEO and founder of Murder, Inc. label, um, showed his ass. He showed his fuck nigga side <laughs> <laughs> on an interview um, with fellow hip hop artists um, Noriega from the um, legendary group Capone and Noriega out of New York. Um, Noriega has a podcast called Drink Champs, which, um, you know, people who's familiar, you already know about that. But Irv Gotti basically was there for an interview, and they were just talking about, you know, of course, the history of Murder Inc. Um, Noriega started to ask some questions about, you know, his relationship with Ashanti. Ashanti and Irv Gotti have not been on great terms for quite some time. I know that Irv had sold, like, the Murder, Inc. catalog, which included Ashanti stuff. So I know Ashanti has been pissed off for quite some time about that. But, you know, she's a very nice girl. She don't really... Um, really have her business like that out in the street. But Irv took it upon himself, of course, on the liquor, on the liquor, <laughs> Drink camps, on the life. liquor, he started singing like a bird, and he just talked about how a sh him and Ashanti um, and their relationship, um, how she basically, once he um, got those federal charges or whatever, the feds knocked at his door, she left him and never turned back. Um, said that they had, um, she wrote the song, um, Happy, Happy, I don't know if y'all remember that song, talking about right after they had sexual relations, and a lot of people thought that that was very, um, fuckboyish of Irv to even bring up, 
um, you know, bring up their sexual history that way. I mean, it's something that happened 20 years ago, and for him to bring it up in a, in an interview was just wrong. Uh, one of those people that spoke out um, against him was rapper Fat Joe. You know, Fat Joe is real cool with Sh- Ashanti as well. Um, yeah, and, and Joe was really pissed off. You know, he had his things he said to um, said about Irv, and also he, you know, kind of clowned Ja Rule as well because Ja Rule accompanied Irv on that Drink Champs interview. And Ja Rule, although Ja Rule would, did tell him, nah, you know what I'm saying, he did kind of try to stop Irv from talking about certain things on the interview I guess for Fat Joe, Ja Rule didn't do enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he probably could have said more in that moment. So, you know, Joe actually, you know, he did have some things um, to say to Ja Rule as well um, for not checking Irv um, during the interview. Um, did you see the interview and, and what you thought about it? Yeah, I think Ja Rule, he, he checked him, but he, you know what I'm saying, he couldn't stop him. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? He was on he was, he was rolling. He was on a roll. Right. And I don't think that was something that should have been brought up now. It's just like that case we were talking about sixty five years ago. You know what I'm saying? Why are we bring why are we talking about that? Uh-huh. Right. And then you talking about what you did with a woman, you hitting and telling and you know. So I'm with Fat Joe on that, man. Shit your motherfucking mouth, nigga. Right. You're trying to embarrass that lady. I mean, you ain't doing that, but you mad? Right. <laughs> trying to get, get back or something? Or uh, something. Like, dude, like, let it go. Like, even though it's, it, in this situation, this is something that happened 20 years ago. I don't care if it was five days ago. I don't like men that talk about who they, you know what I'm saying? If they don't uh-huh. hit you and stuff like that. To me, that's, that's, that's lame boy shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, who goes around talking about they six escapades or whatever, you know, I know guy. I grew up around some guys and I know that's kind of what y'all do. But to me, it's just, it's lame. Any dude that go back and just kind of, you know, pillow talk and all that and be telling shit like you talking to millions of people, thousands of people, dude, like we don't want to know that. And Ashanti damn sure don't want her business out there. Okay. Y'all was together. Okay. We can all assume that y'all fuck. You know she was with him because he the one had the money. You know right, I mean? and we she, right, she an artist. and of we course. know they fucked, but you of ain't got to tell us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, that's so. Oh, I do like that. Total gave us the whole rundown. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> tell us what she had on, what color lingerie was. You know, you might as well mm-hmm. if you gonna Don't tell all that. that. It was just so lame of him to do that, and then, um. Irv did come out with a statement basically stating that um stating that um uh, he tried to play it like it's it was part of his marketing strategy because you know the Murder Inc documentary came out on BET and he has some other you know film projects that's coming up soon here too I believe Tales is coming back also on BET um, so he tried to play play it like, you know, he was just talking about the history. That's part of the history, you know, just trying to help promote his projects. But, dude, out of – it's so many ways you can promote and market your stuff. You don't have to do that on the back back of, you know, Ashanti. You don't have to do that. Mm, I agree. I, he overplayed that one. He definitely overplayed that one. So, Irv, hopefully you will find it in yourself maybe to give um, Ashanti a formal public apology for that. I mean, I know that they, you know, their relationship, friendship, work, business relationship, that shit been dead um, for years, and it ain't no turning back, but damn, dude, you know. He need to at least apologize to the girl. That's what he can do. And stop being lame. But anyways, uh, that is going to be the end of this episode. 
um, thanks to everybody who's been tuning in to, um, you know, us on Sundays on YouTube, group chat live. We get into some interesting conversations. Um, definitely check us out, you know, subscribe to the channel and then turn on the notifications, hit that bell. So you'll know when we go live, but you know what I'm saying? So definitely do that. Um, don't forget we're on every platform streaming platform and on social media at straightforward str the number eight fwd msb on all social media platforms and um, definitely follow us there as well you want to say goodbye ag hey bye everyone and see y'all next week oh next week i'm off vacation i forgot next week you off yes no episode next week and no live next week okay when are you going to tell me now <laughs>